Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today we're going to go all in on a shaker card. I have a card that is decidedly not simple at all, but sometimes, you know, you got to go all in. Got to go all in. And that's what we're going to do today. I think you are going to love the finished result. It's a little involved, but that's what I was feeling. Stick around. My shaker card project is coming up next. So here's a look at the basic supplies I'm going to be using today. I've got this cool trio of love, little, little tiny words. Well, they're not tiny, but three words that I designed to be in a single die set, along with this chunky heart trio, which cuts out both the shadow layer and the outline. I'm going to be using this imperial plate to create a patterned background plate. And I've got pinks here. So I've got kitsch flamingo, Born lipstick and festive berries. It was inspired by this sequin pack because I think I'm going to make a shaker. Now, I've got a piece of cardstock that I'm going to do my blending on and then cut up my panel and then cut my shaker out of that. So we've got a lot of ink blending to do, so let's get into it. I'm going to start out today by working on my large stencil mat. Now, I've already stained this because sometimes when you use really, really deep reds in dye inks, it can stain. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay because guess what? It's not picking up on anything. So to start this blending, I'm gonna start out here. I've got my Simon Says Stamp Blender brushes and I have a set of these that I'm only using with oxides. It's a luxury, right? But then I don't have to worry about the formulations mixing. It doesn't really matter if they do, to be honest with you, because you know, it's just, it's just ink. It's just cardstock. It's all good. I'm going to start out here and I'm just going to create this blend. I want to show you, I've got this panel. Let's open this up. Haven't even, haven't even looked at this yet. I only need that much, right? So I, I always do this a little bit larger because I'm going to be impressing this cool pattern onto this panel. I'm just going to add these colors. We're starting out with Kitsch Flamingo. And I'm using oxides today because I don't know, they're creamy, they're easy to blend. If you ever struggle with blending, give oxides a try. It, sometimes I go in one direction and then I go in another, meaning sometimes I use the regular formulation of distress. And sometimes I do this. And honestly, sometimes it's by just by feel, like I think this would work, or sometimes it's just what's closest to me <laughs> in the class craft slash dining room table. All right. So I'm just creating a simple blend of pinks. Let's bring in festive berries. Now I'm going to switch brushes to, oh, I haven't even used this one. Look at that. This is what these brushes look like, by the way. They have such soft, soft little heads. And I'm going to use this for anything that's red or deeper colored. And that's definitely festive berries. It, uh, it has that sort of reddish pinkish hue to it. Almost like my nails. That's actually a pretty good match. Yes, I may have planned it. Just going to say. But we're just we're just bringing this in for some color. So this part is not hard, right? You can create any colored background and everyone will be happy. I think that's going to be enough space. Yep. All right. So, getting this in here again. Sometimes the nice thing about these mats, well, now it's kind of slipping around a bit, but they will kind of grip your paper a little. And I kind of like that. All right, let's go back to more lipstick. Blend that in a little bit. Just where the transition is like that. Let's go back to the kitsch. Add just a little more up top. Okay. Actually, I should have I should have wiped that down a little. Going back to a lighter color, but I think it will be fine. Like that. And that's good. I don't need to do anything else. So I'm going to grab my die cut machine so we can cut out our panel. I have to show you my new purchase here. I bought the Spellbinders. Platinum six in this special edition. It's a limited edition. I thought it would be nice to have an extra one. Now here's the thing. I've been using the same 
white one for, well, since 2017 when I started card making. This is the exact same machine and the Spellbinders Platinum 6 has been a fantastic machine for me. I kind of got sucked into the color and I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have an extra in case I ever had someone over to craft? I never have anyone over to craft, so really <laughs> this was just an example of I wanted it and so I bought it. So I know they're not going to be available for, er, forever. I'll, I'll link both below, both the regular one and the blue one, but I just think that's just beautiful. So it's new and it's fabulous. Now I also have a Gemini Junior, which I use a lot when I'm doing things off camera because it's much easier to crank. But here's what I'm going to do, meaning I don't have to crank it because it's an electric trimmer. <laughs> that probably makes sense. I'm going to pop this here and you know what? I'm going to cut a little off and I'll tell you why, because these are brand new plates and in an effort to keep them, well, there we go, somewhat straight. It's not a bad idea to angle it a little so you're not taking the full brunt of a flat edge through the rollers. So let's, uh, let's get our first impression with this new machine. Never, never been used before. Did it stay in place? Yep, it did. Here we go. Going through. Oh my, it's tight compared to my old one. Going all the way through. And let's bring it around. She sure is pretty though, that color. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that cut. What? You see that beautiful, texture pattern in there. Amazing. All right, moving on. The next step is to cut a window for the hearts and the shaker. And I don't even know if this tape, I don't know if the tape will stick because of the ink blending. Probably not. See that? See how it comes up? So I think all I have to do is just be quick. I just want that to be as even as possible. I think that's good. Hold it in place and run it through. All right, now I have my window for the shaker set up and ready to go. I can save this as well to make another card project out of the inside. The next step is to take this piece and actually I'm just going to trim off one of the pointy little edges here from there so I don't poke my fingers. I'm going to create an outline in gold. So I've got a little scrap here of this Simon matte gold cardstock. I'll pop this on and we'll cut this outline out. It's so nice this new die cut machine doesn't squeak in the handle like my other one. I suppose all it did need was a bit of oil but okay. Popping this out because I want to keep this shiny gold outline for my shaker card. I'm going to cut out a couple more of these little outlines uh, in white just to build up some dimensions. So I'll go ahead and do that off camera. While I have my gold out, I think I'm going to cut the moi, which I like that little greeting, and run that through. And I'll also cut out a couple in the white cardstock as well, just so that I have here, my way to build up a little bit of dimension. So there is the moi, and then I will take some of this cardstock that I cut one of the extras of this out and cut out a few more of that. Next, I'm going to take both of these and put them in my little box. I always put a fresh sheet of copy paper in this box when I'm going to add my spray adhesive. And I'll just make sure to hold my breath. Start it in the corner and then add my layer of adhesive. Then I will take this out of the box like that. Come over here and just line this up on layer one. There's not a lot of give time with the spray adhesive, but there's some. So you can kind of press that in. And now I have my cute little, well, let's see, do I want to start it up there? Probably. I'm just going to kind of tap it down and just make sure that I wiggle this right into place. 
The spray adhesive is nice because it just allows for a very fast way to glue things together. So I will go ahead and repeat the same process with these so that I have that stacked and built up and ready to go. The next step is to build my shaker window. Now I trimmed this to be, I think it's four and a half by five. Yeah, to just be completely on the back side here. So here's what I'm gonna do. Wish me luck, cause I'm never, I'm never that good with the score tape because I don't wanna use a liquid adhesive necessarily because this is, this has little cuts, right? So I don't wanna do anything that is going to seep through. Is that? Someone actually told me a little trick. They said if you burnish your score tape down with a tool, it will come up better. So let's see if that's true. If it's true, I'm gonna be the happiest person on the planet. Well, I mean, it's, it's mostly, gosh, I just don't have a good burnish and lift. Eh. Oh, that's actually coming up pretty well. All right, not the, oh my gosh, it's very sticky. Kathy, very sticky. I actually might do one more tiny piece in there. I think that's good enough. You see, it's just kind of willy nilly all the way around. And then I'll just pop that down like that, okay? Now, that's kind of cool. All right, so I have, I have my little window, see that? <laughs> Believe me. I think I know what I'm doing. The next thing I need to do, I need to have another panel in white cardstock cut to the same size. So I'm going, cause I'm not gonna do this just on a card base. I, that's above my pay grade. So hold on and let me get that panel ready. So now I've got this cut. This is going to be the back of my shaker that's going to get put on a card. But first I have to build up the shaker. And the way I'm going to do that is with this. I'm gonna take out a big old piece, well, like, I don't know how long I need to make it. Let's let's get it started like that. All I'm gonna do is fold this in half like that. You get it started on one side, right? So it's together, right? And then you just, you just work your way. Work your way around because now what you are doing is you are creating a very quick and easy doubled up frame that is moldable to go around your shaker. And the good news is it's narrow enough to fit on the side. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a nice press. Make sure it stays together. It's getting, getting a little twisty already. And then I'm gonna work my way around. I may need more, I may need less. Now there are some really cool um, pre-done shaker products from Waffle Flower Crafts. And I actually have a video where I used one of them and I'm gonna link it up up top here for you. But this is kind of fun because then, you know, you can turn any die cut shape you have into a shaker and look at this. Now I am also doing a little, a little trick that I do, which is this. I put the folded side out so that hopefully my sequins do not stick as much to the foam tape. Does that make sense? Because this is not as sticky. That edge is pretty free flowing unstick. Well, that doesn't make any sense, but I think you know what I mean. I should just stop talking and focus on the shaker. Okay, it did make plenty. And here's, here's why this can be, oh, get up here, why this can be helpful. Oh, I'm still not quite there. I like that acetate extending out more because then your cardstock will not stick too badly. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Oh my gosh, it's so sticky. I'm just gonna cut it because as you're doing your shaker, right? There you go, you got your well. You also have to build up the rest of it. So we're gonna come out here like that and here like, like that. And then, oh, so sticky. oh my gosh, did, did I get it? I did. I'm gonna add a little more foam down here. This is not a clean and simple card. This is a card where I'm flexing. <laughs> and every now and then you're gonna do that on a card project. You're gonna go all in and you're just gonna give it, you're gonna give it the old, uh, the old crafty try. Okay, 
Now, this is ready to roll. It's going to be straighter once we get going. So now it's time to fill the shaker. I got two things. I got this sequin mix and I have some gold foil because I want to play up a little more of the gold. So I'm just sprinkling this in like that, okay? And then I'm gonna take some of this and just, oh, <laughs> gotta be careful, right? I don't want it to be so full, but I don't want it to be not full. And I got a little guy there and I might just leave that. I may have gotten too much gold in here. So let's get a little more pink out. Just a little more, okay? All right, now it is time, I'll get these out of the way, to place my backer onto the panel. I'm going to line this up to the best of my human ability. Oh my, and press. Get it to be as straight as I can on there, right? We're burnishing it down. <laughs> And you're about to see the magic of the shaker. Of course, this whole thing now is gonna get mounted on a card base, right? But, ah, look how fun that is. It's so cute. All right, let's get our card base. I went ahead and scored this. This is just a half sheet of eight and a half by 11. So this is four and a quarter by 11, right? We're gonna fold it down and give that a good press to tape this closed while I'm doing this part because I find it annoying when they pop up. Now I want to use, I'm, so I'm gonna mount this right onto here, right? So we have this card base on here. And to do that, I'm gonna keep my score buddy in place, but I'm gonna put some really strong adhesive. This is my tape runner from Scrapbook Adhesives. You could use liquid glue for this too, actually. That might even be a better thing, but I don't want to risk anything coming up, coming off. Not that liquid glue would, but here's what I like to do. Oh, that got a little too close to the edge. Get in there, get in there. There we go. Strong adhesive. Oh gosh, I'm getting too close to the edge. On this so that it holds this shaker element, which is a huge panel, on no problemo, see that? This is my favorite little tip for quickly lining things up. Pressing that into the corner, holding this down, lining this up like that, and press. So now I have my card. Now, is there a gap on here? Well, of course there is, it's a shaker card. <laughs> That's okay, right? Because now I'll open this up and show you. People might get confused too when they're you know, there's the inside and there's this part, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think they will. So let's finish this out. We're going to liquid that in and we're going to put the moi right up here. Like I had some barely art glue and I just put little tiny dollops right on the back of my die cut. So now we have a little, little heart, layered heart floating here on the card front. All right. Now, moving on to the greeting, I had a second idea. So here's the dilemma. Do I do my moi, which was my original intention, and I would find a way, I'm gonna pop this up somehow, right? And I want it to be somehow connected to the shaker. I don't want it to be floating off in the ether. I like things to have a visual link. That's the gold version, or I did this with, the, with a little scrap of leftover ink blended paper, what if I did something like that or something like that? See, I were, mm, gosh, I don't know. I'm Now I'm torn. Now I'm torn. What if I popped it down here? Oh, card design, I tell you. One minute you think you know what you're doing and the next minute you don't. But I think, you know, for some reason, I like the gold. Let me get some foam squares and see if I can cut them small enough to build up a little dimension. I put some foam tape right there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be the right amount of dimension, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in here and we're just going to make sure that's right in the center. We're just popping that down like that. And I actually think, I think that's very cute. Now it looks pretty, is it straight? Here's, I'm gonna show you something new. Where did it go? It's my new Misty T-Square. 
this is amazing, okay? So what I can do here is put the Misty T-square on the edge, bring that there, hold that in place, and make sure that's straight. I think it's straight, but the problem is I can't get this to stick. Press. Let that foam tape adhere. I probably should have put another little piece on top of the H because I don't even, yeah, the H isn't making contact. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to squeeze something in there, hold on. This is where something like this is so helpful because now I can actually pick this up on that H, take it out and wiggle it into place, press it down. And now I have something to secure my H onto the shaker like that. I think that's okay. I don't even think it looks bad. I think it's nicely in there. Tuck it, tuck it. And now we are floating where we need to be floating. Ah, huh? look at that. That is some fun. Okay, let's add a little more shine and then we'll wrap it up. To finish this card, I'm just gonna take the one style of sequin. Let's see, can I do it with this little friend? I think so. I think I have to do this right-handed though because it's hard for me to squeeze with my left hand. And let's get a little dab it and go you up Boop. and right down there well, there's something on there but Boop. I'll move that later that my friends <laughs> is not a simple card but let's let's just talk about how fun it is a little shaker a little shiny window look at that cool texture see that in the panel it's just an interesting card, right? There's a lot going on. I don't know if this would be something I would stick in the mail. This might definitely be one that I'm just gonna, well, I could save this for Valentine's Day and give it to the hubs. He won't know what to do with it. And that's always the point. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find all of the supplies I used today linked below the video in the description box. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.